Hey, what up, guys? In this video, we're doing top five champions in Marvel Comics of Champions. This is obviously an opinion video, so don't come at me if your opinion is different. But these are just my top five characters with gameplay of each character. And I'm going to show you why these five, in my opinion, are some of the most insane characters in the game. So, yeah, on to number five. Hopefully, you all enjoy. Peace. Coming in at number five, we have Quake. Quake's playstyle is very interesting, and it's one of a kind. Basically, all you do with Quake is you swipe back, you hold heavy, and you'll place a concussion on the opponent, which reduces ability accuracy by 100%, and it also causes the opponent's next attack to mix, miss. This is great for masochism while you're holding heavy, like right now. She's stunned. Masochism didn't trigger. She's great for suicides. Doesn't need to be wakened at all for her to be good. Her working ability is kind of useless, honestly. And the main reason why she's top 5 is you never need to touch the opponent. This is great for Dormammu's. Mephisto's, Electro, Morningstar, and Magic. Either is great because you never get to push them past one bar of power, so Magic's basically useless. You don't have to ever worry about the Limbo. And the way you want to play her is, when they come at you against the wall, for the first heavy, they'll evade, and then you'll swipe back once for dexterity, then hold um, heavy really quickly, get like an in-in, like an, <laughs> a heavy in, and then you can see on the screen, you just got to rotate in between dexterity and evades just constantly until... It's hard to get used to, but if you're backing up against the wall, you can completely fight stun immune opponents and don't need to worry about placing debuffs at all. I died right there, but that wasn't because of Quake. That was just because I suck. I'm not that good with her. She, the only con for this character I can say is she's very hard to play, but if you learn how to play her, she's a beast. So yeah, that's why she deserves spot number five. In the number four spot, we have Corvus. This guy, I have him as a six star rank too, so I got some cool gameplay in the background. This guy is a beast, okay? This guy has one of the highest damage outputs in the game. He's great for suicides because he is immune to bleed, cold snap, and shock. But the buffs still go, I um, mean, the debuffs still go on him, but they do zero damage. So with willpower, you heal. So you heal with suicides. So he's great for suicides. He's the number one champ for legends runs. This guy is like any legend times maxed out uh, Corvus is just faster than Ghost. He's insane. Same, this guy with speed the way his charges work works are you can get you need to get four charge you don't need to but you got four charges with him that give him crazy crit boost one charge you can get from killing any avenger character you can get one from killing any uh, tech character and you can get one from killing any mutant character and then finally you can get one if if they evade or auto, or auto block you and then you heavy attack them or knock them on the ground in any sort of way then that's a way you get your fourth charge this the guy, he's amazing. He doesn't really need a special ability, but it helps. I don't have it on my 6-star, but basically what it does is you you can't die at 1% unless they like knock down all your glaive charges. You start every fight with 20 charges unless you kill an Avenger, and then you go into a fight against another Avenger. Like, I already got an Avenger kill, so in this fight, I start with 30 charges, but normally you're going to start with 20 only. And what it does is if you're at 1 HP and you have like a, like a debuff that's about to kill you, it will instead um, just do no damage. And every time they hit into your block or hit you, it does like takes away four charges. So you can basically stay, like, you can never die really if you just play well with one HP and intercept only. He can do crazy damage through um, block. Like, he, like, if he hits you in the block, you can, you can crit through it. It does a lot of damage. I'm not doing it in this fight because I think I was trying to. Because there's a node that every 15 hits, you have to throw off a special. And I didn't want to mess with that really. But you can. You can actually, I don't think it really mattered, but. Right now, I'm not. Oh, I'm not taking his block because he has biohazard. It's a biohazard um, guy. He's not immune to poison, which is one rip, but you know, you can't have him immune to everything because he's insane. He's um, parries, place an armor block, uh, armor block, uh, uh, armor break, what am I saying, on the opponent. So if champions like Red Skull and Iron Man Infinity War, which you saw earlier, it does crazy damage. And then if they're at special three, if they're at their special three and you hit him with your special two, it'll drain like a bar of power. So it's good for that. So for this last fight, oh, Andy has above average block proficiency, which is pretty helpful for his parries. But this fight showed this fight's an EMP mod, spy like just um, Ultron. This guy is insanely massive, like three hundred thousand HP, and right here he evaded, so I got my charge, as you can see. If I don't have, if I had my awakened ability, I could stay at one percent forever and never die. But I got a crazy, uh, I one shot him. I've never done that before, actually. I went for this gameplay, and I one-shot him for the first time. Back in my other times, I don't think I was able to do it. But 
basically you want to try to do parry medium light mediums so you don't waste your charges because the way he works is your medi your both your mediums will crit your first light won't crit but then your second two lights will crit and look at that crazy 51k damage so basically if you want to save your charges to do as much damage as possible before you run out you want to do just medium and then do the non crit so it doesn't take away a charge and then another medium so it's medium light medium right now i ran out of charges so right now i don't really have any damage and then there's a node where if you throw off a um if you don't throw off a special after you run out of like the this 15 charges you can see up there it's like the fist i think but if you don't have to throw off a special you take crazy degen so i think i'm at one here or wait no am i at one yeah i think i'm at one here and i don't want to throw off a special yet so I'm waiting for my um, charges to come back. You see that bar? It's like 50 second uh, wait time. So it's like, the only con for this character is if they have crazy big HP pools, you can't take them down. And then you'll go to your weakness phase where like right now I can't do any crits, which kind of sucks. But most characters are dead. I think you can do, I fully, uh, I got my first clear on Act 6.3 using this guy. And right here, I get it back up. I wait. I swing at him so he gets his guaranteed evade and I wait for him to charge on me and I just special too. Bop, 52k, kill him. So yeah, Corvus, as you can tell, is a beast. Don't sleep on him. So yeah, that's why he's in the number four spot. In the number three spot, we have Namor, an insane mutant character. What makes this guy so good? Well, he's amazing with suicides and any debuffs because of his awakened ability. I don't have it, so you won't see it in this video, but this is a rank one four star, by the way. The game player seen in the background, rank one four star, level 10, just rank one. Very, like, not leveled up at all. Should barely be able to do any damage. Basically, it's a Wicked ability. You have a max sig. It takes any damage you're taking in the moment, and you reflect it back on the opponent. So if champions like Electro, Mephisto, Havoc, Havoc's um, plasma detonation, if you're attacking them right when it goes off, you can time it so it does the damage to them, and nothing happens to you. If you're using suicides, you get the heal benefit of the suicides, but you take none of the damage, so he's great for that. All of his specials give 6% uh, remaining um like lost health you get like lost health that you have gains back so if you're at like 99 percent health you'll get six percent of that last one percent you're missing so it's like no healing but if you're at like one percent health you'll get like six percent back pretty much or like a little bit lower like 5.99 or something he's one of the highest prestiges possible which isn't important for like anyone that's not end game but his prestige very good basically what you want to do with this guy is he has outrage tax, and how the outrage tax work are you go up to 30. Every um, three seconds you gain one passively, and when you throw a medium attack, you have a 30% chance to bleed. If you, the bleed doesn't proc, which you don't want it to proc, it'll give you an outrage charge. So you really don't want to get the bleeds on. And when in Imperious Rex form, which is what he's in now, when he gets to his outrage, or when he gets to 30 charges, he shoots up to three bars of power, and his power will slowly go down. Any specials he throws off in Imperious Rex cost 90% less power, so it's pretty good. And they're unblockable in um, Imperious Rex, so you can just throw them off even if they're blocking. And in Imperious Rex, if you throw a heavy attack, you gain one bar of power back. So a crazy rotation you could do is... Oh yeah, also I forgot to mention, when you go to Imperious Rex, you get a Fury which gives 300% attack. This is what makes him, his special twos lineups crazy. Just his damage altogether. You can line up three Imperious Rexes and get 900% attack, which is crazy. And you launch off a massive special two. So I'm setting it up right now. Basically what you want to do, get close to like 30 charges, but not quite. So I'm baiting out of specials. Also specials for Namor don't give the enemy like any power, I don't think. So look, you line up one, you use a special three. The special three will put you in Imperious Rex and um oh well no, it won't put you in Pierce Rex. it'll just give you the fury then you're about to trigger Imperious Rex when you get to 30 stacks i'm at 29 or 20 or something 30 you try to hit up you get to a special three you gotta try to line it up because the power slowly drains but you can line up once you use the special three again this is your second special three you have 600 percent fury right now 600 percent attack so you do crazy damage then if you can you can try to get a parry heavy get the extra bar power you gotta line it up it's very slim timing you get a third fury for 900 percent attack and when you come out of here you can launch a massive special too with a five star maxed out you can do over like 300 to 400 thousand damage with a special two right here 3,000, 10,000, 7,000. that last bit crit it would have done like way more damage 
right here I got I choked and got hit but yeah that's basically Neymar he's insane now we move on to our number two spot and the gameplay you're gonna see in the background is only a rank three four star if he was a maxed out five star or a maxed out a uh, rank two six star he would destroy stuff way faster than this I had the Wolverine kill but it didn't save so I'm gonna go over what, how Aegon works and basically, this character, one con that you need to get him, like, sigged up and, like, high signature level is basically the, his signature ability wor works in the way of, um, the, um, when he's awakened at, like, level 1, he carries over his combo from fights to fights, like, 25% of his combo, and then I think at max, it's, like, 75%. And basically, how Aegon works is he's a ramp-up character. When you have 5 hits in the combo meter, crits have a 40% chance to shrug off a debuff. 10 hits, each hit on your combo meter will increase crit damage. And from 0 to like not 1,000 hits, your crit rating and crit damage will go up like slowly over time. So eventually, once you're over like 100-ish hits, you crit almost every hit. 30 hits, you get crit through their blocks. You can do crap down of damage to the blocks. And you can proc things through their block also. 50 hits, makes your heavy makes unstoppable on combo shield. And you're going to see me do this in this video. It's kind of like a suicide tactic. I don't only really do it with the heavy. I kind of just take a punch to the face like I just did there. Actually, that was good timing. The right way. Basically, if you get a hit and you have combo shield up, you won't, you know, take uh, you won't lose your combo. And it'll basically gain six furies to Aegon, which do massive damage. Look at this. Four star rank three doing an almost 8k medium. So it's just crazy. And then you got... 75 hits in the combo. Crits do way more damage through blocks, basically. 100 hits. Crits have a 100% chance to shrug off debuffs. So, basically, once you're at 100 hits, he's fully debuff immune, which makes him crazy. 150 hits. Crits gain true accuracy, which prevent auto-block and invade. So, basically, when you're at 150 hits, you're all... Uh, on top of being debuff immune, you're, like, evade immune and auto-block immune. So, like, no evade characters can really screw you over. 200 hits, crit and ignore physical resistance, not that big a deal, but 300 hits, this is when your damage starts ramping up. Every crit gives you a 1 second fury buff, which stacks to 3 times, so you're going to see in the video. 500 hits, this is when you can deal with anyone with regeneration, it's basically hit, crit, cause opponents 100% defensive ability accuracy reduction for the next hit. So if you get a crit, their next, um, next hit after won't be able to give them a, um, like for Wolverine example, a regen proc. But if you get like a non-crit, which is really rare, but it can happen, then the next hit after can um, proc a regen. But most of the time you're critting with Aegon at a high combo. 750 hits and 1,000 hits. This is when it gets fun. 750 hits, you gain a combo shield and unstoppable for every hit. And then 1,000 hits. If you get a crit, it makes your next hit un stop, uh, uh, what's it called? unblockable, which you see me doing in this video. So basically the tactic that I'm doing in this video is kind of rambo it's gotten me killed it got me killed in the black bolt fight like you can go through all of aegon is the only character in the game right now that can go through every single fight of labyrinth of legends and be able to one shot it so the only con for this character really is he needs a high signature level and the fact that he's high pressure to play once you have his combo built up he's not that high pressure to play but the strat we're doing now is before using a special attack or sometimes we'll just do it by letting him hit us. I don't think I do it as much in the Hulk fight as it is in the Black Bolt fight. Is with the mix of unstoppable um, combo shield and unblockable. What I would do is I would do a full combo and then just let him hit me once, but I'm unblockable and unstoppable, so I can just keep hitting him. But I'll get those six Furies up and I'll do crazy damage. So right now, so I'm doing the safer version, which is the heavy attack. So I'll bait out all of his specials and then I'll charge up a heavy, let him come at me. He. Okay, he didn't come at me, that's kind of sad. But basically, when you use that heavy attack, you want them to hit you once, and the second they hit you, you have unstoppable, so you don't even need to worry about them to combo you, just hit him. The second they hit you one time, you can instantly launch your special. Now you have like nine Furies or something like that, and your hits will just do crazy damage. You'll be, like on this fight, I think I'm doing like 8k a medium when I have all the Fury ups. And this is a rank three four star. Rank 3. Maxed out 5 star Aegon or rank 2 6 star Aegon. Can deal with any fight in Labyrinth. And then Realm of Legends where I am now everyone has like 500 to 600k health. A maxed out 5 star Aegon at 1000 hits. Could destroy all these fights in like 20, 30, 40 hits. Like honestly if you just get those Furies up. You just do massive damage. So yeah Aegon is just insane. He's like literally one of like 
when it comes to long fights and long quests, this guy is your boy. The only uh, other con that I just thought about is like you need like one fight to ramp up with Aegon. But like once you get to like 40, 50 hits, you don't have any utility, but he starts hitting really nicely. Once you get to the 100 hits, you got that guaranteed debuff immunity, and it's just crazy. When you're at 1,000 hits, you're basically god. That's the way you can describe it. You have unstoppable, unblockable, furies, crazy damage. When you, I uh, forgot to mention your special three stun, which you've probably seen in the video, you can get off a 22 hit combo. You're immune to all evade, all auto blocks. You're immune to every debuff. Every time you crit, it will just shrug it off. Basically, Aegon at a thousand hits is just insane. So yeah, I think I die here really soon. Cause yeah, I get the crit, I launch special two, massive, get the nine furies or whatever. Look at that. Then I rushed in. I was so dumb there. But other than that, Aegon's a beast and that's why he deserves the second place. We finally made it to the number one spot, and if you've ever played this game before, you knew it was, who it was going to be. It's just Ghost. Ghost is insane. If you don't know how Ghost works, basically she has a phasing ability, which you see me doing on screen. When you swipe back, you phase, and you're fully, like, um, I mean, what's it called? Like, they, they can't hit you. They miss. Their attacks will just miss against you. And you can do, do this to dodge crazy specials and stuff like that. But what makes her so good is the makes her the number one character in the game. A few things. One, her phasing, if she has any debuff on her, which I have suicide, so watching the beginning of the fight, I swipe back, both um, the poison and bleed, or any debuff in the game, that's damage over time, she can swipe back and just convert it to a massive fury. So, she's great for bio biohazard nodes, which is the um, path I'm on right now, which you can see, so, which makes her great with suicides. She can, she has two um, synergies, which make her really good. You can use the Ant-Man one, but it's not as good as these two, I'd say. The hood synergy which is the one that I'm using now, and the Wasp Synergy, which I'm also using now. The Hood Synergy basically makes it so that while you're phasing, you can't take any damage. So basically what this means, you push them to a bar three bars of power, right before they throw off their special three, just swipe back and you're phasing, and then when they use their special three, and you won't do any damage. And then the Wasp thing, which is what you see me do in the fight, is if you swipe back, if you're phasing while throwing a special, it um, makes the special unblockable, um so and a guaranteed to crit so basically what you want to do is the right hand your hand that you normally would um punch them with and swipe in you want to swipe back with that hand and right when you swipe back at the same time when you're phasing click your special attack and that'll make it so it's unblockable and does crazy damage this ghost i'm using is a f rank five four star but she's like really low level so i would pretty much just say she's rank four and just look at this she's like most characters can't deal with the war machines level one unblockable right here i forgot that you um can't convert them when you're mid special so i got two bleeds so i just wanted to show how good this character is like she if you play her properly i'm new to the character so i like i literally started playing her for this video because i only have a four star i don't need her as a four star because she's not strong enough to do anything unless but if i had her as a five star i'd max her out instantly but this is just to prove that even with one hp you can like just win the fight like it's really easy with ghosts just she really just is amazing. You can go through a whole fight without losing a single point of HP if you're good at the game. So, yeah, that's all there is to Ghost. She's a pretty good character. And, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. You could like, comment, and subscribe. And, yeah, see you guys in the next one. Peace.